Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be sharing all of the books that I read in 2023. I've done this video many years now. I can't remember when I started it, but I always just like showed you guys the books, told you the titles, but I feel like this year I want to kind of talk about them a tiny, tiny bit, but because I've read 150 something. I think it's 151, but then I realized some of them weren't marked as read, so I don't really know, but I think it's 151 books this year. There are a lot of books to talk about, so I really don't want to talk too much. So it is going to be a really brief overview, but I thought that especially this year I wanted to do it since I didn't really talk about like a lot of the books that I read since I kind of went through a phase of not really, not not talking about books, but I wasn't really like sitting down and making bookish videos. So then they kind of fell through the cracks. But anyways, I have my little like notion library here with all the books that I've read. So let's just dive into it. Also, actually, before we start, these are the books that I read between December 2022, like December 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2023. So it is technically 13 months. Usually I will end my reading year at the end of November because I was doing bookmas, but then I decided not to do it. It's really not that deep. Like don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to anyone for that matter. But technically I read 151 books in 13 months, not 12. So that being said, we're starting off with quite a few Christmassy books. So first we have We Met in December by Rosie Curtis, which I give my ratings on like Notion, but I don't put them on Goodreads just because I I don't know. I found people like if I changed my opinion on a book or if I was like feeling differently, they were like, oh, but you rated it this and it's really not that deep. But I gave it a 2.75 out of five stars and I kind of forget what it was about. So clearly I didn't like it that much. Next is The Silent Stars Go By by Sally Nick. This was like a historical YA Christmas story and it was just kind of okay. I gave it a three out of five stars. A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sarah Simone. I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. It was definitely steamier than I was expecting, but I had a lot of fun with it. That sounds weird when I say that it's steamy, but you get what I mean. Whiteout, which is by various authors, I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. This was like kind of not short stories, but is it short stories? To be honest, I can't really remember. No, it's not short stories. It's just different perspectives and a bunch of different authors and it was cute enough. I just don't generally like those compilations so much. I like like the idea of them but the actual execution I'm just okay on. After that I read How to Excavate a Heart by Jake Maya Arlo which was actually really cute. I gave this one a four out of five stars. It's about a young lesbian who is like learning more about how she is in relationships and she is on this um whatchamacallit. She's at this apprenticeship apprenticeship for archaeology, which is very cool. There's something about Mary by Cody Hall. I had read the first book, which was Nick and Noel's Christmas Playlist, and really enjoyed that one, but this one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I didn't like it quite as much. Always in December by Emily Stone, I gave a 1 out of 5 stars. I really disliked this one, clearly. Uh, I did a whole reading vlog where I read this one, and like you can see in live action how disappointed I was by it. It was just so stupid. Just like Magic by Sarah Hogle, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I wasn't so sure about this one because I feel like the author's writing is kind of hard for me personally to get into but it very much worked for this character. It's like a Christmas spirit so it had all of the Christmassy things. If you like Christmas it's the book for you. All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox. I gave a 3.5 stars. I felt like this one was fine. It's just cute Christmassy romance. Kisser Once for Me by Alison Cochran. It got a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It was once again a cute Christmassy romance and then we have a very merry bromance which is the latest book in the Bromance Book Club series by Lisa K. Adams and I gave that one a four out of five stars because it was a lot of fun and I loved that series and I also loved the character that I was focusing on. Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday definitely really surprised me. I gave this one a four out of five stars. Was not expecting to like it as much but I am going to be checking out the other books in the series. It's like a royal romance and it was very good. The Holiday Swap also by Maggie Knox. I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. I really liked this one in the beginning but then like didn't love it in the end. It's about twins, this whole switch situation kind of not parent trap but like that sort of idea and it was fun. So This Is Christmas by Tracy Andrean. I ended up DNFing. It was just way too corny for my personal taste. I wasn't a fan. And then the last Christmas book that I read this past year, like you know what I mean. I have some from this most recent December but these are the ones from December 2022. This is 
like a ooh, very confusing but that is meet me under the mistletoe by jenny bayliss which i gave a 3.25 out of five stars and it was a fun one like just a british lots of friends sort of christmas story now the rest of the books we have echoes and empires by morgan Rhodes, which i gave a 3.25 out of five stars this was a fun way of fantasy but i just wanted to like it more arsenic and adobo by mia p Manansala. i really ended up liking not my general thing because it's a cozy mystery but i liked it a lot an arrow to the moon by emily xr pan i gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars i did really really enjoy this one which i'm very happy about because i just love emily xr pan the rumor game by danielle clayton and sonia chivre potra i ended up dnfing just because i found that the story was too triggering for me so i decided to put that one down carrie soto is back by taylor jenkins reed i gave a 4 out of 5 stars i really enjoyed taylor jenkins reed like many of you i wasn't so sure about carrie soto because i don't know anything about tennis but i found her to be a very fascinating and engaging character highly suspicious and unfairly cute by italia hibbert i gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars this was her first ya contemporary i just kind of prefer her adult ones or her adult romances like the brown sisters trilogy i really love the great alone by Kristen hannah i gave a 5 out of 5 stars as you guys know it was on my favorites of the year i completely love this one and i didn't realize i read it on the 5th of january so actually a year ago today i finished reading it so i once again got to like a really good start i always read some of my favorites in the beginning of the year i don't know what it is but it puts so much pressure on me every january you had me at ola by alexis daria i gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars once again just cute romance the gunkle by stephen rowley i gave a 5 out of 5 stars once again it is on my favorites list of the year and then i read the book eaters by suni dean which is a completely different vibe uh this one was really hyped up and it was actually very cool really dark but very unique compared to anything else i've read so i gave it a 4 out of 5 stars with and without you by emily wibberly and austin sigmund broca i gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars and then all my rage by saba tahir i gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars which is once again one that was on my favorites of the year i finally actually read graceling by kristen kishore which has been out for a very long time but i never read it when i was younger and i gave that a 3.5 out of 5 stars it was very much like a good classic YA fantasy. Never Ever Getting Back Together by Sophie Gonzalez. I gave a four out of five stars. I enjoyed this one a lot. It's like this bachelor thing and they end up falling, like two contestants end up falling for each other. It's super cute. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I gave three out of five stars. I think Erin Morgenstern is just unfortunately not for me. The Davenports by Crystal Marquis. I gave a four out of five stars. This was a really fun Regency, I think, era romance, but it's following a black family and they are very well and prestigious and it was just such a fun look at this family. I think that there's going to be more in the series so I'm looking forward to that. Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I gave a four out of five stars. This is a very popular and hyped up book and it definitely lived up to it. Now next I read Bunny by Mona Awad so I can tell exactly where in the year this is. This is when Jackson died because uh, I was reading this book when he died which is uh not not great but I didn't like it anyways I gave it a two out of five stars but definitely it has bad memories associated with it as well but then the first book that I read after that I read The Last Chance Library by Freya Sampson which was on my favorites of the year and it was a lovely book to like come back into reading with so I gave that one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry because I was looking for like cozy reads that were just going to make me feel good since I was not in a good headspace and this one I had heard like so hyped up and seen it everywhere and I just didn't really enjoy it as much. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I'm not going to say out of 5 stars every time too because I'm sure that is getting repetitive but I also finally read The Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. This one got a 3.25 stars and I thought it was fine. It was the first fantasy I've read by this author. She has a lot of romance. Um, actually I think she has adult romance too but I've only read her YA contemporaries and I've really liked them so this was different but it was good. When in Rome by Sarah Adams, I gave a 3.75 stars. I'm really trying not to say out of five stars, but it's kind of ingrained in me. And then X's and O's by Amy Lee, I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. Dang it, I said that just automatically. But this was a super cute romance, like for Valentine's Day. It, I think if you are looking for anything to read this Valentine's Day, it's a great one. It was unexpected because I didn't really like the previous book I read by this author, but I liked it a lot. I'm so not over you by 
Kosako Jackson, I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars, a different sort of romance than I usually read because it's a second chance romance. They'd broken up and I liked it. Blood Like Magic by Lysel Sambury, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I feel like I should have included this one on my favorites of the year list. I ended up enjoying it a lot. It's a YA fantasy and I was kind of burnt out on those, but this one took me by surprise. Actually, The No Show by Beth O'Leary also took me by surprise because the first book that I read by this author I was not a fan of, but this is once again a Valentine's story, but super unique, like not expected at all, and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Once again, a Valentine's Day story. I was really on my Valentine's Day shit this past year, but The Do-Over by Lynn Painter, I gave a 3.5. It was cute. It was like a Groundhog Day situation, so that's always fun. The Sweetest Remedy by Jane Icaro, I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. I just really enjoy Jane Icaro. Sing Me Forgotten by Jessica S. Olsen, I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This was like a Phantom of the Opera retelling, which is a lot of fun. My back is hurting. <laughs> Wild Woman in the Blues by Denny S. Bryce. I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. It's about like blues era and it is a woman like looking back on her life then. It is kind of like Evelyn Hugo sort of vibes. It was good. Then I DNF'd A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy I. Lynn. Just didn't vibe with it. And then I read When We Lost Our Heads by Heather O'Neill, which was not what I was expecting, but not really in a good way. It wasn't bad. Like I definitely have really complex feelings on this one. So I gave it a 3.75 stars. A Million to One by Adiba Jagiradar. I gave a 3.5. It is this like ensemble cast high story set on the Titanic, which seems to be 100% my vibe, but it didn't like quite live up to it. I Kissed Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. I gave a 3.75 out of five stars. It reminded me a lot of Paper Towns though. The Reader by Tracy Chi. I gave a three out of five stars, which was kind of disappointing because because I loved the only other book that I've read by this author so much. Reggie and Delilah's Year of Falling by Elise Bryan. I gave it 4.5 stars. I just loved this one. I talked about it in my favorites of the year. And then Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. This was just like a cute little cozy story set in the world of Sorcery of Thorns and it made me want to reread it honestly. Maybe I'll do that this year. I don't reread very often. Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo. I gave it 4 stars. It's like a graphic novel backstory to the Darkling and I just love the Grishaver so obviously I liked it. A Thousand Miles by Bridget Morrissey. I gave a five out of five stars. I talked about this in my favorites of the year as well. And then In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. I gave a 4.5 out of five stars. This was like totally unexpected. Not what I was thinking it was going to be but I liked it. In like a heartbreaking way though. It was really good but also just like completely crushed me. The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. I gave a 4.75 out of 5 stars once again in my faves of the year list. And then Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I gave a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I can't remember what I gave the love hypothesis but I think it was definitely higher than this one. Uh, but later in the year I read another book by Allie Hazelwood and love it, spoiler alert. But Love on the Brain I just found to be a little bit too cheesy for me and then there was kind of like this turn that it took that felt really unbelievable and just took me out of the story entirely. Salam with Love by Sarah Sharaf Beg. I gave a three out of five stars. It's a cute romance set during Ramadan. I just think that it was reading a little bit younger than my preference right now. The Storied Life of AJ Fickery by Gabrielle Zevin. I finally read and I gave that a 3.75 out of five stars. I think my expectations were just too high. And then You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogle. I actually DNF'd this one. I could not stand it, honestly. Like these characters were so toxic. I hated all of them, so could not do it. Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. I gave a 3.5 stars. This is a romance following a character who has ADHD. So I appreciated that representation a lot. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I gave a four out of five stars. This was super hyped up. It's not generally my vibe, but I actually really liked it for a YA mystery. The Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. I gave this one, sorry, I don't have the the in my actual like notion listing, but I gave this one a four out of five stars. I feel like my memories of it are a bit more fond than like when I was actually reading it because it doesn't have as high of a rating as I thought, but I didn't like give it an honorable mention in my faves of the year list. I don't know, but I think it's because it had a dog, honestly, and it was kind of like a fun superstar romance. I feel like I read a lot of celebrity romances this past year. I have no idea why. Friday in Love by Cameron Garrett. I gave a 3.5 out of five stars, a really nice LGBTQ plus story 
Story. And then Spice Road by Maya Ibrahim, I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. A solid YA fantasy. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner, I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This one I remember my expectations were pretty low because it was very hyped up but then a lot of people didn't like it but I actually enjoyed it. Well That Was Unexpected by Jessie Q. Sutanto got a 4 out of 5 stars. This is the first YA book that I've read by this author but she also wrote Dial A for Aunties which I am such a fan of but then I didn't really like the second book so I wasn't so sure but this one was super cute. One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid is a very different sort of Taylor Jenkins Reid book for me, but I actually really liked it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Our Violin Ends by Chloe Gong, I also gave a 4 out of 5 stars. It was the conclusion to the Our Violin, or These Violent Delights, rather, duology. <laughs> Other Birds by Sarah Addison Allen. I'm such a fan of magical realism, and this one was recommended to me a lot, but I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was a good book, though. I liked it. We Weren't Looking to Be Found by Stephanie Kuhn. I gave this one a 3.75. It was way darker than I was expecting, but I quite enjoyed it. I think if I had read it when I was younger, I would have liked it a lot more. <laughs> Lies We Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood. I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. This was very controversial. Like, I know a lot of people didn't really enjoy it, but I don't know that much about, like, the myth that it's retelling, so I quite liked it. When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It was one of the weirdest books that I've read. Very unique, like women literally turn into dragons. It's kind of like an allegory story, but it was very cool. Charming as a Verb by Ben Philippe, I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. I think it might just be Philip. I can't remember, but I think listening to the audiobook I was like, oh, I've been saying that name wrong. Anyways, I do really like his writing. The Setup by Lizzie Dent, I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. The book that I had read by this author last year, I really loved, and I have seen kind of like mixed reviews about her books, but I enjoyed that first one. This one I didn't like as much, but it was it was fine. The Neighbor Favor by Christina Forrest. I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars once again on my faves of the year list. And then Heart of the Sun Warrior by Su Lin Tan. I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's the sequel to Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I just, I'm not a huge sequels person. I think that's what it comes down to. The Jump by Brittany Morris got a 3.75. It was fun and like also very sad and made me think a lot too. Happy Place by Emily Henry got a 5 out of 5 stars. I, I'm surprised I kind of gave it that high of a rating. I felt like it was going to be more like a 4.5, but my memory is always like awful when it comes to these books. But it was also on my favorites of the year list, as was the next book that I read, which was Remarkably Bright Creatures by Shelby Van Pelt, which got a five out of five stars, 100%. Loved this one. Like an octopus as a character? I can't. Out of the Easy by Ruta Sepetys. I got a 3.75. I am such a Ruta Sepetys fan. I just didn't like this one quite as much as the others. And then Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller got a 4.5. This was the final book in the Bladesmith, I think is what it's called, duology. I can't remember the name of the first book, but I really like that duology. I love her fantasies. Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. I gave a 3 out of 5 stars. It just was not what I was expecting. I mean, yeah, it wasn't what I was expecting, then it wasn't really as good as I was expecting, because I had heard everyone talking about it at work, and then I was just kind of like, it's not, I don't know, I didn't, I had high expectations. Same thing actually with The Scatter of Light by Melinda Lowe, which is a companion to Last Night at Telegraph Club. You don't have to read both of them, but you see characters from Telegraph Club, and I just didn't enjoy this one as much, so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The Sunbearer Trials got a 3.75. It was a really interesting story, and I loved the whole concept of it, like the whole race and everything was very interesting. I think I said interesting twice, I can't remember, now Charlie's barking, there's a lot happening. Maybe at the Lake by Carly Fortune got a 3.75. I quite enjoyed, I can't think of what it's freaking called right now, the uh, one what is it called? I don't know. I quite enjoyed Carly Fortune's first book, but didn't like this one as much, but I did still enjoy it. You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levithan got a 3 out of 5 stars. Wild Things by Laura Kay got a 3.75. It was a very, like, different sort of Pride Month read for me. It was super cute. It's like this gay commune that they make. It's adorable. The Mare of These by Cherie Dimeline. I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Seven Days in June by Tia Williams got a 4.5. So I did talk about that one in my faves of the year. Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen got a 3.5. And then I kind of started reading Self Help. So that's including, like, my total number of books read. But I'm actually going to do a separate 
separate video about that, so I'm going to skip over those. So, Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Monahan. I gave it 4.5 stars. I read Nora Goes Off Script by this author last year, and I definitely enjoyed Same Time Next Summer way more. Like, it's childhood friends to lovers, which I'm just a sucker for. I don't know why, but I just love it. Then of course, The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer got a five out of five stars. This is like an all time fave for me. I adored it. And The Daydreams by Laura Hankin. This was also on my favorites of the year list. It got a 4.5. Wanderlust by Elle Everhart. I gave a 3.75. I was really in love with the concept, but I don't think it like fully lived up to it for me. The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I gave a four out of five stars. This has been like so hyped up and I'm very glad that I finally read it. It wasn't what I was expecting at all but I really liked it. The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I gave a 3.75. This one definitely made me think but I think I was confused for a lot of it too which is why the rating isn't quite as high but I know a lot of people love this series. Summer Reading by Jen McKinley got a 3.25. It was cute. Uh, Summer of Broken or The Summer of Broken Rules on Notion I have the the at the end that's why I was getting confused but The Summer of Broken Rules by K.L. K. Walther got a four out of five stars. This one is like I guess it has some to do with Taylor Swift but I have no idea and I don't really know anything about Taylor Swift either but I just thought it was a fun summer romance. I loved the like game that was going on in it. From the Jump by Lacey Walden got a 4.5. I really enjoy Lacey Walden romances and this one was no exception. Before We Were Innocent by Ella Berman is definitely not the kind of book that I would normally read and it was fine. I gave it a three out of five stars. The Roughest Draft by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca got a four out of five stars. I always have like mixed feelings. I either love or hate their books but I did actually really like this one. Meet Me in Paradise by Libby Hubscher I also loved in like a heartbreaking way. Got a four out of five stars. I feel like it should be higher though to be entirely honest but this one was on my favorites of the year list. Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson got a 3.75, super cute romance, and then The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren I gave a 3.75 as well. I didn't even realize that this one was following characters from The Soulmate Equation. I don't know how I didn't realize that, but I love the characters so that was fun. When We Had Summer by Jennifer Castle I DNF'd wasn't vibing with it. And The Comeback Summer by Allie Brady. I never actually gave a rating. Why did I not give that one a rating? Uh, but thinking on it, I feel like that one was probably like a three or a 3.5. I'm gonna give it a three because I don't really remember it all that well, but to be honest, I don't remember many books very well, which is why I struggle to talk about them. It's a struggle because I wanna talk about them, but then people want a lot of details and I'm like, I don't know. So yeah, hope that's fine. As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow by Zulfa Katu. I gave a five out of five stars and I talked about this one, obviously my faves of the year as well. Never Vacation With Your Ex, also by Emily Wibberly and Austin Sigmund Broca, got a three out of five stars. I feel like their YAs are the ones that I'm not really vibing with as much, but actually this past year I read more adult books than I did YA, which is pretty wild. Better Than Movies by Lynn Painter got a 3.75. It was cute, had all these references. I'm sorry, I've said cute so much but had all these references to rom-coms which I thought was a lot of fun and then That Summer Feeling by Bridget Morrissey I gave a 3.5. It was like a fun story. I feel like I've said fun a lot too but I only have so many adjectives in my tiny little brain right now uh, but it was like the summer camp for adults. I loved that. Summer Island by Kristen Hanna I gave a 3.5 so this was like I don't want to say my most disappointing Kristen Hanna read because I did still enjoy it but my expectations for her books are just so incredibly high. It's really not fair, but it is what it is. We Deserve Monuments by Jazz Hammonds. I gave a 4.5, so I did really enjoy that one, and it definitely is another one that got me thinking. The Mutual Friend by Carter Bays, I DNF'd. Wasn't really vibing with that one. Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yeros, I gave a five out of five stars. It did live up to the hype for me, so I talked about that one in my faves of the year. Good Girl Complex by Elle Kennedy, I gave a 3.5. Uh, it was cute, but I kind of had some issues with the romance, like wasn't my fave. It. And then I read The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith, which I gave a 3.5. I think this is another one where I love the concept more than the execution. Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez, I gave a 4 out of 5. I don't really remember what this one was about entirely, but I do remember really enjoying it. Like I have good memories of Abby Jimenez books, which is nice. Like clearly I do because I thought I gave Happy Ever After playlist a much higher rating than I actually did. <laughs> the Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston, I gave a 3.75. I find her romances are really interesting because they're unique. Like they all have this kind of different element to it and 
I just, I have a good time with them. Funeral Songs for Dying Girls by Cherie Dimelein. I gave a 3.5. This is kind of the time of the year where I really slowed down my reading because I got sick and then I got sick again. So my reading just kind of went on the back burner, unfortunately, but it is what it is. And then The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by Sangu Mandana. I actually love this one. This one was on my favorites of the year list. Once again, I forgot to put the the at the end. Uh, and I gave that one a five out of five stars. The Book Binder by Pip Williams got a 3.5. I thought this one was good, but I didn't quite enjoy it as much as a Dictionary of Lost Words. But I did appreciate that they were connected, like there were references to the other book. Wasn't expecting that. Iron Flame by Rebecca Garros is the sequel to Fourth Wing, and I actually really enjoyed it. I didn't give it a rating here once again. What am I doing? <laughs> but I would say I give this one a four. 4.5. I liked it a lot. Apparently people haven't liked it, but I don't know. I liked it. Check and Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much, but I gave this one a four. I was, I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't expecting to like it as much. I think because of my most recent Allie Hazelwood read, but this is her first YA book and I thought it was a lot of fun and super cute, but it definitely didn't fully read as YA to me. And then I have a few that like, I don't know where I read them in the order of reading, but I forgot to actually mark them off as read for some reason. But Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong, I know I read in November, at the end of November, and I didn't give a rating to any of these, but this one I would give probably a three. I was kind of disappointed by it. Wanted to like it a lot more than I actually did. The Celebrants by Stephen Rawley, I would probably give a four. I enjoyed this one, but not quite as much as The Gunkle. And then The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali, this one I would probably give a four or a 4.5. I really actually actually quite liked this historical fiction. And then the rest are Christmas reads. So Once Upon a December by Amy E. Reichart, I gave a 3.5. The Christmas Orphans Club by Becca Freeman, I gave a 3.5. A December to Remember by Jenny Bayliss, I gave a 3.5. I think I gave all of these pretty much a 3.5 around there. I never really had like one Christmas book that I fell in love with this year, unfortunately. I just kind of burnt myself out of them. You're a Mean One, Matthew Prince by Timothy Janofsky got a 3.75, so high. And then Three Holidays and a Wedding by Marissa Stapley and Uzma Jala Ludin got a three. I think I would give it probably a 3.5 though. And The Holiday Trap by Roan Parrish got a 3.5. And finally, The Christmas Wager by Holiday Holly Cassidy got a 3.25. Ta-da! So those are all of the books that I read in 2023. I feel like it was a really solid reading year. I definitely had my ups and downs, but like I do that any year, but I feel really proud of myself for all of the books that I read. So please let me know if you read any of these books, your thoughts on them. I hope this kind of gave you a little bit more insight into my reading year, especially more than like in previous years where I've just shown you the title. I know it's gonna be a bitch to edit, but like it is what it is. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in another new video very, very soon. Bye!